Hello, my name is Sylvie Grace Borda. In this talk called The Agency of Light, I'm going to be looking at the history of the photogram. You have to wonder where to begin. The beginnings of the photogram reside with Thomas Wedgwood. In particular, Wedgwood was interested in how light and heat could affect pottery. Wedgwood was well aware that silver salts were light sensitive. Up until recent, no one has believed that Wedgwood actually created a photographic image. However, there's been a new leaf, as you see here on the right, suggesting that maybe Wedgwood, as early as 1800, had created the first photogram. Moving forward in time, one of the key purveyors, and of course considered the founding father and pioneer of photographic arts, was William Henry Fox Talbot. In 1834, he had been experimenting with coating silver salts on paper. As he started to expose his images, he was actually using leaves and other flat objects. His work was defined as photogenic drawings, the ability of the sun to create a self-generated design. Herschel gave us the word photography, negative and positive, and amongst other things, he was also the inventor and founder of the cyanotype or the blueprint process. In this particular example, what Herschel was recognizing is that the photogram process or this idea of something pressing or leaving an impression could also enable engravings, drawings, prints, artistic material to be duplicated. This cyanotype shows a woman reading. It would have been from a positive steel plate engraving. Anna Atkins was a well-known botanical artist as well as an illustrator. She started to create the first photographic book, as it's known today, the scientific opus looking at British algae. Hippolyte Bayard himself has created a blueprint. So we can see that there's this exchange between England and France. In Bayard's image, he's arranged a whole series of specimens showing that everything from feathers to textiles to ferns to poppies can be printed out by the photogram process. Moving along, what we also find is that the photogram process, or this ability for something to leave an impression when light is passed through it, also impacts artists. And in particular, the Barbizon School, led by Camille Corot, but under a bit of a different guise. The group actually used the term cliché vert, or meaning chipped glass. Smoked or photographic plates could be used, and if you etched or chipped away into a ground, you could create a drawing, and that image could then itself be printed out with a passage of light. William Conrad Rutigan was experimenting with cathode tubes, and through accidental means, he recognized that as the cathode tubes were being calibrated, his photographic plates were getting fogged or leaving an impression of things behind. This image here is the very first medical x-ray done. It's Rutigan's wife been produced in 1895. What you see is her skeletal hand and her ring being recorded. X-ray, an unknown ray, was creating this type of imagery. What you find is particularly after World War I, Christian Shad starts to adopt the process. He is very much interested, in my opinion, in data and cubism and starts to recognize that shards of paper can be broken up placed onto the photographic plane, and this leaves, in, in fact, an impression of itself. So you also have Laszlo Moholy-Nagy working with the photogram process and calling his material a lumigran. In particular, he was interested how the painting of light, how the movement of light could offer very different variables in terms of how to animate that photographic plane. In this particular image, you can actually see um, both a reversal and positive process happening. You also had in the 20s and 30s Man Ray. In Le Souf, you see here, this was done for the electricity board. They were trying to promote an electrified world. And what you find is that the Parisian or the French electric company is looking to Man Ray. He's given this commission. So we have everything from the fan, Le Souf, to the iron, to the toaster, to light bulbs. Moving on, past World War II, the photogram process again remains dormant. And it's really not until the late 70s and early 80s do artists like Adam Fuss begin to experiment 
Equally, um, Foose has done uh, more contemporary works. This one's from 2002, from the series My Ghost. In particular, this one is looking at smoke. Movement of the smoke is recorded onto the photographic paper. Equally so, we've had other artists moving forward, such as Christian Marclay, who's re-experimented with the cyanotype, this idea that this is this iron-based salt process that creates this vibrant blue image. And you see this here as well, where he has these looming audio tapes creating these very delicate, intricate images uh, um, where they, they hang and dangle. Artists like David Massel, no longer working directly with the material, but in a very conceptual way, actually asking museums to donate their x-rays, their impressions of objects, to inform his new body of work called History's Shadow. So he isn't there directly taking the images, but he's culling and recreating all of these images to find, form a new body of work. So aesthetically, the photogram, whether it's through x-ray or through the direct impression of the object left behind on the photographic paper, is creating new aesthetic bodies of work, creating new images that, again, fascinate the eye. The photogram, after all, is an image that's unique. It's produced without a camera, and it's produced where the object is the negative.